Hi, I'm Katie Brickner from Scholastic Classroom Magazines. I'm here at the United States Mint in Philadelphia. Today, we're going to learn about how the coins that you use every day are made. Let's go! Have you ever wondered how the coins you use every day are made? Each coin is created at a mint. The United States Mint in Philadelphia is the largest and most efficient mint in the world. Approximately 30 million coins are produced here every day. The process begins when Congress authorizes the United States Mint to make a new coin. Seven artists on staff in Philadelphia get right to work designing their ideas. My name is Joseph Mena. I'm a medallic artist. Uh, I design and sculpt coins for the United States Mint in Philadelphia. Uh, I work exclusively digitally, uh, both for two-dimensional drawing and three-dimensional sculpture. It's like a hybrid between drawing and sculpting. Um, what I can do on the computer that I can't do with clay is uh, basically create any design or image that comes to mind almost literally at the speed of thought. The one thing that, that working digitally allows me to do is work on a, in, a, in a larger canvas, so to speak, and still have something that is manufactured at a very small scale. When I begin a design, and initially a, for a two-dimensional drawing, I draw on the screen just like one would with pencil or paper. So I can sculpt and draw on this just as if it was a ball of clay. I could sculpt any type of, any type of figure, um, any type of model. I can preview it so it looks like it's uh, gold. I can preview it so it looks like it's silver. And if I don't like what I've done, I can go back and, liter and, and actually erase it, which is something that you can't, you can't do with, with clay. Say, say this was a, a different form and I wanted to add some type of either text or texture or geometric design here. I can add that to the, to the, to the model. The only limits to what you can do with this stuff are pretty much uh, the limits of your imaginations. The winning design must be transferred into steel. A computer program converts the design into a series of points. The program sends the data to a machine, which carves the design into a piece of steel, creating the master hub. The relief on the master hub is positive. If we used it to strike a coin, the coin would be negative, or backwards. Instead, machines strike the master hub to make a die, creating a negative impression of the design. The die is used to strike coins. On the factory floor, giant coils of copper and nickel are ready to be turned into coins. Each coil is about 1,500 feet long, the length of five football fields. The coil gets unrolled through a blanking press. This machine is like a cookie cutter, punching small disks called blanks from the coils. Next, a series of machines prepare the blanks to be turned into coins. A conveyor belt moves the blanks to another part of the factory where they are poured into the top of the coining presses. One by one, the coins slide between two dies. One for heads, one for tails. A single strike creates a new coin. The coining presses can strike about 12 coins every second. They use approximately 60 tons of pressure to make one quarter. That's like 10 elephants jumping up and down. The finished coins fall into a bin next to each press. When the bin is full, the operator of the press checks the quality of a few coins, looking for cracks and imperfections. The finished coins are poured into giant bolt bags. Each bag weighs over a ton when full. A bag of quarters is worth about $50,000. Finally, the bolt bags are put into the vaults where they await shipment to the Federal Reserve Banks. And it all began with an artist. To learn more, open your Scholastic magazines.